So if you're seated in a wheelchair and you can't raise your core metabolism easily through exercise, and if you shy away from eating and eat less calories, your metabolism slows down, how do you burn calories? How do you control weight loss? How do you lose weight? I think I figured it out. In this video, I'm gonna share with you what I think is the very, very best diet for people who are wheelchair users. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy, and thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I wanted to discuss some thoughts surrounding diet and multiple sclerosis. And in specific, how does someone in a wheelchair control their weight? How does someone seated in a wheelchair lose a bunch of weight? It's a really difficult problem that many people impacted by MS who are seated in wheelchairs deal with something I've seen in clinic for a decade and a half. And recently, I think I have uncovered the diet to help people with wheelchairs control their weight. Let's jump in. To start to unpack this, we have to think about the medical establishment's common recommendation for weight loss. Simply, exercise more and then eat less. Exercise more and eat less, which is what I was taught to tell people in med school, doesn't work. <laughs> And it's a real problem for someone who's seated in a wheelchair. I want to unpack this a little bit. The idea is if you exercise more, let's say that you're jogging daily, then you're burning calories and you're raising your core metabolism, forcing your body to burn more calories all day long, even at night, etc. Yay. And if you don't eat so much, then you're not feeding the engine. You're not adding calories in. It goes back to this false idea of calories in equals calories out. And that is a very incomplete understanding of human metabolism. And it has failed bunches and bunches of people, including me. But it's a major problem for someone who's seated in a wheelchair because that human being may have grave difficulty in exercising adequately to raise their core metabolism. That's not to say that someone who uses a wheelchair can't exercise because they most certainly can. There's lots of different ways to do it, but I'm saying it might be really, really hard to constantly raise their core metabolism through constant swimming or whatever uh, exercise they may be trying. Then you turn your attention, as many of my patients do, to the other side of that so-called equation. Okay, well, if I can't exercise more, I'll just eat less. So if I take in less calories, then there's less calories in, therefore I'll gain less weight or I'll lose more weight, except that does not work because if you simply back off of calories, your metabolism slows down. As a result, by eating less, your metabolism slows down. You don't lose weight. It's a terrible conundrum. And it's worse when you think about the fact that eating is awesomely fun and delicious, and it's a source of enjoyment and, and quality of life for human beings. So I have many patients that find themselves in a wheelchair, overweight, really struggling to control their weight, and in some cases having medical complications as a result. And they're not eating massive amounts of food. On the contrary, they're being very judicious about what they eat. And it's not that they're not trying to burn calories, but it's just really, really hard when you're motorically challenged to do so. So what do you do? Real quick before we go on, do me a huge favor. If you like this content, give the video a thumbs up, please. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. Those two actions let the YouTube algorithm know that you really like the content and help push it out so more people impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. So if you're seated in a wheelchair and you can't raise your core metabolism easily through exercise, and if you shy away from eating and eat less calories, your metabolism slows down, how do you burn calories? How do you control weight loss? How do you lose weight? To date, the best recommendation has been some type of GI surgery, like a gastric bypass or gastric sleeve or gastric banding. And this has been studied and found to be safe in MS, and it is an effective way of weight loss, but it's also a surgery, and it's also not readily available to most people. So that's not gonna be a viable long-term answer for most folks. So what is? I think the answer is intermittent fasting. For those of you that follow the channel, 
you know that I personally have been on an intermittent fasting journey where I've lost 40 some pounds and kept it off. I'm healthier and doing better than ever before. And I've made several videos on the topic. I'll throw a link up here in case you wanted to check that out. More importantly, I've been studying intermittent fasting in the setting of MS, and I've been talking to many, many of my own MS patients about using intermittent fasting. Recently, I had an amazing eye-opening experience where a patient of mine in a wheelchair has successfully lost a lot of weight and he did it using intermittent fasting. It was awesome. This young man came into my office with his wife. He's very affected by MS. He's in a wheelchair and can't move his legs and he can move his arms, but not super duper well. Boy, he had lost a lot of weight. He looked like a million dollars. He was smiling from ear to ear. His wife was smiling from ear to ear and he shared that he had been watching some of the intermittent fasting videos and had been trying it and it worked. He lost a lot of weight by controlling his eating window, which I'll talk about in a second. And he was noticing benefits across the board. He had more energy, his mood was better, he was sleeping better, he was less stiff and sore, and his physical therapists were noting that he could do more. It was an awesome celebratory moment in clinic. And it makes me want to share that excitement with you. I really feel that someone seated in a wheelchair who might not be able to diet or might not be able to exercise the way that we classically suggest is able to control the window of time when they eat and the window of time when they don't, just like this young man. And if you can do that, you can apply intermittent fasting. So let's discuss this a little more in depth. Here's a quick Intermittent Fasting 101. When you eat food, it causes your insulin level to rise. Insulin is the storage hormone. When your insulin level is up, it's telling your body anything that you take in, store it, store the energy for later. And so if you eat something and you're currently running, you can use it in that moment as fuel. But if you're sitting, that food that you eat is going to be stored as fat for later. When your insulin level is up, you can't burn fat. So the problem is many of us are eating all day long. We're eating breakfast and then 11sies, and then we're having lunch and then we're having a little snack and then we're having a goûte and then we're having some dinner and then we're having an after dinner dessert. Then we're having a midnight nosh and we're eating all day long, constantly keeping our insulin levels elevated, meaning everything we eat really can only be stored as fat. And that problem can be compounded if you're seated in a wheelchair with limited ability to burn calories. If instead you have a window of eating, and I use a intermittent fasting schedule of 16-8, meaning I eat for an eight hour window and then I don't eat for 16 hours. So we'll use that as an example. If you have a window of eight hours when you eat and then you stop eating, for the next six to eight hours, let's say, your body's gonna be using the energy that you've given it in the form of glycogen or stored sugar, which is mostly in your liver. So you've got like six to eight hours of stored sugar in your liver, and as you do things and your body's being used, you're using that sugar as energy. But after six to eight hours, your insulin levels have fallen, and you've used up that glycogen, and your body says, I still need energy, and it switches from burning sugar to burning fat, lipolysis. And this is really what we're after. If you remain fasting and your body still needs energy, obviously, it'll start to burn your fat. So by using a window of eating of eight hours and then by not eating for 16 hours, you're gonna tap into fat burning. That's what I did to lose 40 pounds and to keep it off. And that's what my patient seated in a wheelchair very successfully did simply by using a 16-8 intermittent fasting. I am super thrilled by this idea. Now, the disclaimer as always, I'm not telling you that this is the right thing for you or that it's safe for you medically because you have to talk to your doctor, your clinician about what's right and safe for you. I am super excited, however, that this appears to be a really effective way that a human being with MS seated in a wheelchair can control their weight. I'm excited about it and I hope that you are too. If you'd like to learn more on the topic, definitely click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.